Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about installation and configuration which is required for Microsoft Defender for Identity Classic Sensor. Now, since we know what is Microsoft Defender for Identity and we have kind of seen all the prerequisite uh, which is required for MDI, let's just go ahead and install the sensor on one of our servers. Now, this is my recommendation that before you go ahead and deploy any MDI sensor on any of your server, just navigate to security.microsoft.com and just go to the section of Microsoft Secure Score, apply a filter of Defender for Identity and you will see that it's only one single recommendation that will be shown here. However, once you have deployed MDI sensor, then what you will see is a very detailed list of different controls that can be implemented. So for example, uh, this screenshot that I've shown you is something that I have taken before installing uh, the MDI on one of our servers. However, if I now go ahead and apply Defender for Identity filter, you can see I'm getting many recommendations here, which was not the case before. Prior installing the sensor, I was only getting this particular recommendation, which says start your Defender for Identity deployment. However, it is now showing the status as complete which was to address okay now the very first thing that i would like to talk about is the type of sensors which are available in microsoft defender for identity okay so these are three different categories the very first one is classic sensor the other one is standalone sensor and the third one is built-in sensor now this feature is kind of only available to those machines or those servers which are already onboarded to MDE okay so now let's talk about our first option which is classic sensor okay now think about this setup uh, which is something that can be installed on ADCS, ADFS, domain controllers and truck connect and any version of Windows Server 2016 or above okay so there is a dedicated set of file that you will be downloading on uh, your on your machine from security.microsoft.com and then depending upon the server type uh, the respective option will be selected by default i'll show you that in an action and then things will make a lot more sense however uh, the classic sensor is the one which was there in the past how however this new built-in sensor has been released lately okay so for majority of your scenarios you will need classic sensor now the other one is standalone sensor or let's say standalone server to be very precise now this is something that you will be installing on a workgroup machine and port mirroring is required now let me explain this in a lot more detail assume these three domain controllers are the one from which you have to monitor the traffic and you don't want to install the sensor on these particular servers so in this case you'll get one more dedicated server which is a standalone server or, or a workgroup machine and then from these servers the very first thing that you have to do is to create wef forwarding which is windows event forwarding because if you remember when i was talking about mdi setup there were two different things which are required from domain controllers the very first one is windows events and the other one is network events right so for windows security events you need wef which you will be configuring here and here both which means here you will be creating the subscription and from here the domain controllers will send all the logs to this dedicated server and from here it will be sent to your cloud service okay similarly you have to also configure port mirroring so that the network traffic can be monitored right so this is the second scenario which is standalone server the first one was you can just download the setup go ahead and install it on your domain controllers provided you have network whitelisting done everything will work as as expected however if you don't want to uh, whitelist the URLs on your domain controllers then you need a dedicated standalone server the third scenario is built-in sensors and this is kind of only applicable to domain controllers for now and that too the minimum version is around 2019 
okay so this feature is only available to the customer who have already onboarded their domain controllers to microsoft defender for endpoint and the minimum version required is 2019 now when you go ahead and install the classic sensor on your machine there is one specific requirement and that is it requires dotnet framework 4.7 okay so microsoft defender for identity requires dotnet framework 4.7 now if at all this version of dotnet is not available then mdi sensor setup will automatically install it and this requires you to restart your server which we know that's the case with dotnet framework that if it is upgraded or let's say a new version is installed it typically requires a restart so i repeat this again by default, .NET Framework 4.7 is required for MDI to work. If it does not exist on your domain controllers or on your server on which you're trying to install the classic sensor, it will install it. Now, it also installs the Nmap, uh, which is, let's say, the typical network monitoring uh, deep packet inspection solution, which is available by NPCAP. And the version is 1.0 okay now let me show you this section in the official documentation because this is something which is very important and i want you to make sure that you read this part before we go ahead with the deployment okay perfect so this is the article uh, where it has been clearly mentioned that if at all dotnet framework 4.7 or later isn't installed the defender for identity center set a package installs it that's the very first important aspect that I wanted to make you read. And then it also requires your machine to get restarted. So make sure uh, you do this when it's kind of offline hours or not at the regular uh, productivity hours. Okay. And then, uh, as I said before, that NPCAP OEM version 1.0 is also installed, fundamentally speaking, because with this only the deep packet inspection is possible on the server okay now assume that for one specific domain okay you have configured five different dcs or three different domain controllers okay and they all are sending data to microsoft defender for identity cloud service in this case one of one of your servers per domain i repeat this again one of your server per domain will be nominated as domain synchronizer and the purpose of this particular se sensor is to make sure uh, that it syncs the entity specific data for that particular domain which includes users group ou information right typical object structure which is there in ad now assume that for a specific domain when you have three DCs communicating to cloud identity service, this particular machine was not able to communicate, let's say for 30 minutes. In this case, automatically a different domain controller will be selected as domain synchronizer. Now, this information is again something which is available on the portal. You'll come to know which machine is acting as a domain synchronizer, but this is something which is very important. So I wanted you guys to know about this. Now, fundamentally, every 10 seconds, practically speaking, there is a process uh, which comes with MDI, uh, which evaluates uh, the memory allocation or memory which is available for server. Okay. And anything which goes beyond, uh, let's say, 15% of CPU utilization, then a specific alert is generated. Okay. Now, this is where the monitoring component of MDI comes into the play. And again, this is something which is very important. Now, there is just one very small component as well, which I want you guys to read with me. And this is related to this particular process part itself. And that is the Defender for Identity Sensor includes a monitoring component that evaluates the available compute and memory capacity on the server on which it is running. The monitoring process runs every 10 seconds. Okay, so you can see this is what I have mentioned over here. This process runs every 10 seconds and dynamically update the cpu and memory utilization quota on the defender for identity sensor process 
the monitoring process makes sure that the server has at least 15% of free compute and memory resource available. No matter what occurs on the server, the monitoring process would continually freeze up resources to make sure the server core functionality is never affected. If the monitoring process causes the Defender for Identity sensor to run out of resources, only partial traffic is monitored and the health alert is reported as dropped port mirrored network traffic. Now again, this is something which is very important for you to understand because domain controllers being the most critical servers uh, which are there for any enterprise, right? Perfect. So now let's go ahead and download the setup and get things going. So right now I'm signed into security.microsoft.com and then I've clicked on settings and I'm clicking on identities. Now here, since I've already added one in the past, that's why I'm getting this particular option. Otherwise, it will show you that it is creating a workspace and then you will land up to this particular page. OK, now here I'm going to click on this option, which says add sensor. And you can see I'm getting this option which says continue with classic sensor. Now, if at all, you have 2019 uh, version of servers and you also have MDE on those servers and you can just click on activate servers and it will show you the list of servers where MDI can be activated. Now, this particular setup does not need uh, the NPCAP OEM version v1.0 because this is something which happens by default with uh, the built-in agent. But as of now, we'll choose the most common option, which is continue with classic sensor. OK, now here I have downloaded the installation file and this is the access key that you will need always uh, to make sure that whenever you are installing a sensor, it is something with which the sensor will get activated. OK, so I'll pause the video and I'll copy the setup to my server and then we'll get started or with the installation itself, okay? Perfect, so the download is complete and I have the setup file now. Now I'll go back to my server where we will be installing the MDI sensor, okay? So here I'll go to downloads and here I'll just paste the setup file. And now let me just go ahead and check the host name of this particular server, which is PDC. So it's pdc.conceptswork.com. Okay. Now here I'm going to extract all the files. Perfect. I think uh, the extraction process is completed and you can see I'm getting these three kind of files, uh, sorry, two files and one folder listed here. Now, before I go ahead and install it, I would like to show you that the server which is currently getting listed is from a different domain. It's conceptswork.n. However, the server on which I'm logged in right now, it is conceptswork.com. Okay. Now, once you extract the sensor file, then let me show you one very important aspect which is again related to the configuration and that is this sensor installation configuration JSON will fundamentally have your workspace uh, address and your workspace ID. So this was the name uh, you remember which I was showing you and this is something which I've also shown in the deck or in the slide where I was asking you to go ahead and check the test network connection aspect, right? You can use this particular part itself to test the network connectivity through ping endpoint, if you remember. OK, now here it's a typical setup which will be installed while the installation is going on. OK, and since I'm using 2019, I am sure I already have .NET Framework 4.8. Maybe that's that's what uh, is there by default. Yeah, so you can see now since this machine is already having the required version, it, it does not require a restart. But if you will be using let's say 2012 R2 or even uh, the older versions, then uh, you may end up now. Uh, ironically, I said 2012 R2 because that was to make you understand. But fundamentally, you need at least 2016 and above to make the installation work. 
So in a nutshell, if 4.7.NET Framework does not exist, this setup will go ahead and install it and it requires a restart as well on the server. Okay. Now see, since this machine is domain controller, the first option is already selected by default. And I am not getting the option to choose any of these because it's a domain controller and it's a classic sensor that will be installed on this particular machine. Now it's asking me for access key. Now all I have to do is come back to my portal and just copy this value from here and give this value on the console which is this particular section and that's it now I'm going to click on install now as I said before three things are going to happen uh, the very first thing is it will go ahead and check uh, .NET framework then it will install the NPCAP OEM version v1.0 which is required for deep packet inspection and then the entire setup will be completed so I'll wait for a couple of minutes once the setup is completed I'll resume the video okay and as of now it's 4 O2. So let's see how long it takes for this particular setup to get completed. Perfect. So it took around two minutes. Uh, for perfect. So it took around two minutes for the installation to get completed. That's all. I'll click on finish, and the entire setup is completed. Fundamentally, there is no GUI which is available over here. For this particular solution since it's a cloud native solution everything has to be managed from security.microsoft.com okay so now this was my machine which is pdc.conceptswork.com and now let me just go back to my server and see if I can get this machine or if I'm getting this machine listed over there so this was my console let me just refresh this web page and the expected behavior is we should get uh, the other sensor listed as well. Now, all this was possible because when it comes to network requirement, everything is in place. When it comes to TLS requirements, everything is in place. Okay. So at times it may take around, let's say, 5-10 minutes to change all these states here from stop to running and uh, this unreachable to up to date. This is the one which we have just configured. And once everything is up and running, then what you can do is you can just navigate to your server again and then go inside this particular folder, which is Program Files Azure Advanced Threat Protection Sensor. Your sensor will be listed over here and then you can go and read the logs. If at all, there are any errors that you can see. OK, so these are the folders that can be referred to. If at all, there are any errors related to your setup. OK. So this was all about knowing fundamentally how exactly we can install the sensor and, uh, and get started with MDI. Now, if I click on this particular sensor, you can see I'm getting these many alerts. Okay. However, that's not the case when I talk about the one here, you can only see it shows sensor stopped communicating, which means what there are some set of uh, configuration which needs to be implemented and that's what we are going to talk about next and that is how to configure ntlm and advance or audit settings on your mdi servers just to make sure the right set of logs are getting captured okay so if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time